Welcome to unit number three of our series, Finding God Through Faith and Reason. In the last uh, uh, section, we were talking about St. Thomas Aquinas' uh, proof for the existence of God, and I promised that I would uh, now expand that so that we could really uh, see why he uh, was so convinced um, for the necessity uh, not only of an uncaused cause, uh, but what we're going to later on call pure uh, act of existing or pure acting power. Again, some of these things can be a little bit complex, uh, but don't worry about it. There's a book out uh, that I've written called New Proofs for the Existence of God. And uh, in this particular uh, unit, we're going to be uh, taking material from uh, Chapter 2 of the book. Uh, the other thing is there is the Institute on Faith and Reason at Gonzaga, which can, might be able to give you some sheets on uh, some of these topics. And uh, so uh, um, I think uh, you might be able to see it in writing. Again, our emphasis is also uh, not just for uh, people that are currently in the viewing audience, but again, if you know some uh, people who might be uh, struggling with their faith, maybe a family member or a friend, uh, please be sure to recommend this series to them. Uh, and also the videotape uh, of the series as well uh, with the book uh, and the accompanying uh, support from the Institute on Faith and Reason. Well, let's get to the, the topic at hand. We need to, to you know, uh, take uh, uh, St. Thomas's wonderful proof there and, and just expand it uh, a little bit. And I'm going to just expand it in some contemporary terms. So, um, you know, if you'll trust me for a second, I'm going to, uh, go through this in, in about four sections. Uh, one is going to be the proof for an unconditioned reality. That's going to be more or less like St. Thomas's proof for an uncaused cause. Then I'm going to take a, a second area and I'm going to talk about the proof for why an unconditioned reality has to be absolutely simple. And it turns out that absolute simplicity is really the same thing as saying an unrestricted power uh, or an infinite power, and we'll have to explain that in, in, in some detail in, in, in another unit. And then we're going to take a proof for why it is that an absolutely simple reality has to be absolutely one. It can only be one. And then finally, take a look at why that absolutely unique or one, unrestricted, absolutely simple, unconditioned reality, why it has to be not just the creator of everything else that is, but actually has to be the creator, the continuous creator of everything else that is. So, we're now going to take a look then at uh, this first step in our argument. So, it's going to take multiple units to do this, but we're now going to just take the first step that at least one unconditioned reality must exist. As I said, later we'll see why it has to be absolutely simple, why it has to be an unrestricted power, why it has to be unique, and why it must be the continuous creator of all else that is. Okay. An unconditioned reality. First, we need some definitions of some terms. And what do you mean by an unconditioned reality? Well, it, it comes down to this. An unconditioned reality is just like uh, St. Thomas Aquinas' uncaused cause, except we're going to just talk about it right now in terms of whether it has conditions or doesn't have conditions. And here's the definition. An unconditioned reality is one that does not need to have any conditions fulfilled in order for it to exist. It requires that no conditions be fulfilled in order for it to exist. Well, what's a conditioned reality? Well, a conditioned reality must be a reality that needs to have some conditions fulfilled in order for it to exist. And we'll see in a moment that conditions could be of any kind. I mean, you could have conditions that could be something like, well, uh, some kind of a power. Or conditions that could be even, well, like a magnetic monopole or a location or a field or a, a field structure or uh, anything that is required in order for something to exist. Well, let's just call that for a moment a condition Anything required for something to exist is a condition of that thing's existence. And, of course, you know what a condition is. A condition is anything required for something else's existence. Well, let's take an example. Let's take a look at the diagram on the screen right now. And let's take the simple example of a cat. As you can see, you know, a cat is obviously a conditioned reality. Why? 
because it's dependent upon conditions for its existence. Like, what kinds of conditions? Well, clearly a cat is dependent upon cells and very precise structures of cells in order for it to exist. And without those cells, no kitty cat. Without those precise structures of cells, no cat. So in other words, the key thing is that cat, in order for it to exist as a cat, very much depends on those cells. But those cells, in turn, are, are the cells conditioned realities? As it turns out, they, they are conditioned realities because they're dependent upon molecules and very precise structures of, of molecules for their existence. So you can see pretty much that, uh, that uh, without those molecules and without very precise structures of those molecules in the DNA and RNA formats, that, that uh, those cells are not going to exist. And if those cells don't exist, the cat's not going to exist. But, but what about those molecules? And you can see that those molecules, in turn, why, why they're utterly conditioned realities because they're dependent upon combinations of protons and electrons for their and neutrons for their existence. And, and in the case of hydrogen, no neutron. But the idea is, of course, that they're dependent upon protons and electrons. And, and protons, are, are they conditioned? And it turns out they are conditioned realities because they're dependent upon quarks and structures of quarks. So some up quarks, down quarks, strange quarks, charm quarks, and combinations thereof, which give rise to the whole hadron family or positively charged family of particles and so forth. Now, it may be, you can say, that, that those quarks are not isolatable uh, from, from actual proton or positive particle structures, but the point is they are conditions for its existence. So just think for a second, a conditioned reality is one that depends on conditions for its existence. Those conditions can be just about anything. They could be structures. They could be actual entities like cells or molecules. They could actually be fields. They could actually be a magnetic monopole. They could be any, anything, even a location, anything which is required in order for something to exist. Now, a conditioned reality is one that depends on those conditions, that is to say, anything for its existence. And an unconditioned reality is completely independent. It requires absolutely nothing. No locations, no structures, no things, no fields, nothing in order to exist. Now, having said that then, let's just take a look at the whole range of all reality. Now we have in philosophy, there's just a wonderful technique called complete disjunction. And what that means is you're able to elucidate all of the possibilities. So if you look on the, the diagram again on your screen, you'll notice that you can split reality into two parts. Let's say two hypothetical parts. One of those parts has to be true. And only one can be true because it's a complete disjunction. So one and only one. So one has to be true, but only one can be true. So let's just take a look for a second at, well, what are these parts, you know, for the two parts of this disjunction? In all reality, either there must be at least one unconditioned reality, or going to the other side of the disjunction, no unconditioned reality exists in all reality. So you have two options, right? Two hypothetical options. Either in all reality there is at least one unconditioned reality, or in all reality there is no unconditioned reality in all reality, in which case everything in all reality is a conditioned reality, right? Because if there's no unconditioned realities in the set of all reality, then everything has to be a conditioned reality. Same thing is to say there's no unconditioned reality. Now, let's take these two options. Now, the wonderful part about a complete disjunction is because one of them must be true and only one can be true, right? You don't want to 